Along the banks of the Potomac, near the nation's capital, lies an institution with a heritage of technical curiosity, preserving a legacy of transformation and evolution, and upholding a tradition of providing creative solutions that inspire advancements and cutting-edge technology around the world. Dahlgren. Since 1918, firm foundations of science and engineering at Dahlgren have served the fleet by ensuring the safety, reliability, and effectiveness of its weapon systems. Always striving to make certain that U.S. forces maintain total dominance in any theater. Dahlgren's dramatic metamorphosis to become today's high-tech nexus of research, development, experimentation, and testing reflects its century of service meeting the fleet's ever-evolving dynamic requirements around the globe. Dahlgren has risen in response to the Navy's call time and time again, armed with knowledge across an impressive spectrum of disciplines, making a difference every single time. Dahlgren's story is transformational, abound with reinvention and adaptation for the future. From proving grounds to weapons lab and beyond, Dahlgren's record of versatility and agility remain unequal. It's a steadfast focus on innovation that makes this all possible. With more than 500 patented inventions produced over the past 50 years, Dahlgren's advancements touch everything from cell phones to ground and air transportation, and every guidance system on the planet. By remaining on the cutting edge of research, development, testing, and evaluation, Dahlgren's investments in the future will continue paying dividends for the fleet well beyond the 21st century allowing them to overcome the greatest challenges imaginable. This is a community of scientists and engineers, innovators and trailblazers, warriors and patriots, who united make Dahlgren's resolve possible. And then I got a call to Dahlgren, and that was in 1956. I was just proud that I could stand up with, with those great scientists that were doing such important work and had computers and had calculators and had slide rules. It was, uh, it was quite an experience. I loved it. Today, Dahlgren's invaluable contributions and advancements touched nearly every combat system in the Navy's fleet, and its undeniable impact continues to be felt worldwide. As a vanguard of the cutting edge, Dahlgren's innovations have continually pushed the envelope, breaking through seemingly impossible barriers. Their leadership, hard work, and dedication steering us into a boundless future and upholding the superiority of America on any battlefield, even tomorrow's. So hold your hat, Tojo. Here's a calling card special delivery. Whenever the paradigms of modern warfare shift, Dahlgren's cutting-edge innovations have led the way. Among Dahlgren's early developments was the first fully successful flight of a remotely controlled N-9 seaplane in 1924. This feat lasted an entire 12 minutes from takeoff to landing, a unique milestone in experimental aviation history and one that preceded today's impressive unmanned aerial capabilities. During World War II, America's definitive response to the imminent threat of Axis domination was nothing short of revolutionary. It was weaponeer Captain William S. Parsons, a former Dahlgren experimental officer, who armed the gun assembly aboard the Enola Gay on its way across the Pacific to Japan 
to deliver what was known as Little Boy, the atomic bomb. Included in Little Boy's inventive design were pieces of specially crafted elliptical armor, tested and evaluated years earlier by Dahlgren personnel in utter secrecy. There's no denying that the quality of their work and proofing guaranteed the success of this legendary mission. And so by the mid 20th century, Dahlgren's latest developments hailed the end of the World War and the coming of the Atomic Age. The space race between the United States and the Soviet Union gained momentum in the 1950s, and Dahlgren's work on cutting-edge concepts persisted. Officials of international business machines and high-ranking naval officers are on hand for the induction of the Navy's newest recruit. It's called the Naval Ordnance Research Calculator, NORC for short, and it's described as the world's fastest electronic brain, never needing a vacation for multiplication. The lady can tell what's going on by watching the numbers, if she doesn't blink. The Naval Ordnance Research Calculator, or NORC for short, was the world's first true supercomputer built by IBM and installed at Dahlgren in 1955. Dahlgren immediately began generating long-range trajectory computations for the very first U.S. ballistic missile system, the Army's Jupiter. Groundbreaking mathematical descriptions of the Earth's gravitational field emerged from these endeavors, earning Dahlgren a principal role in the next evolutionary leap the Navy's Fleet Ballistic Missile Program. With Dahlgren's foothold on the future firmly fixed, even more computer firepower was added to their arsenal by the late 1950s, helping overcome new challenges in ballistic calculations, navigation, fire control, and the processing of satellite orbital data. Innovation once again followed from Dahlgren's spirited pursuit of the cutting edge. In July 1960, the nuclear submarine USS George Washington successfully completed the first underwater launch of a Polaris ballistic missile off Cape Canaveral, a feat barely imaginable only a decade or two before due to the complex calculations required. As the 60s progressed, Dahlgren's growing experience in the realms of navigation, satellite missions, and orbital data helped guide the development of the Navstar Global Positioning System, which we know today simply as GPS. GPS, in its final configuration, will consist of 24 satellites circling the Earth, with eight satellites in each of three orbital planes. The spacing of the satellites and the distribution of the planes provide at least four satellites available for a fix any time of day anywhere on Earth. Over the years that followed, technology continued to advance at an exponential rate under Dahlgren's unwavering leadership. By the turn of the next century, integration became one of the Navy's top priorities, and Dahlgren spearheaded the creation of new testbed technologies. Dahlgren's human system integration endeavors sought to integrate the user, hardware, and software as one system, evolving around situational awareness, distributed decision-making, and action. The Distributed Engineering Plant, DEP, addressed critical fleet interoperability issues. This high-fidelity, shore-based battle group testbed was responsible for linking up dispersed combat system sites across the U.S. By assessing each battle group prior to deployment, DEP was able to effectively measure total battle group system performance. DEP's success became a stepping stone for further advancement of the Navy's integration goals. The Navy's very own virtual ship, aptly named the USS Dahlgren, takes DEP's achievements a step further, conducting cutting-edge technology investigations using an elaborate fiber optic network, 
The network links hardware, software, and experimental weapons and other assets with crew and personnel a safe distance away, operating as if they were aboard a real vessel. The advances realized by Dahlgren Division's virtual test beds allow the Navy to experiment with new weapons, systems, techniques, and equipment safely and at a fraction of traditional costs, while bolstering their ability to respond to any conceivable modern threat, from real world to cybersecurity and beyond. Over the course of four decades, Dahlgren's R&D led to the development of high-tech electromagnetic weapons like the powerful railgun, which uses electrical energy to launch projectiles at targets. These weapon developments have resulted in longer range, shorter flight times, reduced reliance on traditional ordnance, and safer storage and replenishment. The Navy's Laser Weapons System, or LAWS, also flourishes under Dahlgren's direction. LAWS was the first high-energy laser weapon to successfully shoot down airborne targets from a naval surface combatant. It became the Navy's first deployed laser weapon system in 2014, aboard USS Ponce in the Persian Gulf. Dahlgren has remained on the cutting edge of innovation since its inception and continues to evolve in lockstep with the Navy, standing ready to respond to any of its diverse needs around the world. Following America's Civil War, the Navy of old underwent a remarkable transformation, leaving behind the tall sailing ships and ironclads of yesterday for more modern vessels and technology. By the 1920s, it was poised as the largest, most advanced fleet in the world, with the most cutting-edge weaponry at the time at its disposal. The Navy's colossal momentum during this period produced an equal but opposite reaction in its wake. A need surfaced for greater technical rigor in research and development to enable the continued innovation of better, safer, and more powerful weapons. Without fail, Dahlgren has answered the call. In the late 1950s, thanks to its increasing promise as a leading weapons development laboratory, Dahlgren was awarded control of the Navy's fledging HERO program, designed to eliminate the premature detonation of ordnance by electromagnetic emission. We also study the effects of electromagnetic radiation upon weapons. All naval ordnance systems containing electro-explosive devices are evaluated, and requisite steps taken to prevent unintentional activation by current induced in the fleet environment. Dahlgren engineers rigorously tested every ordnance design used by the Navy at the time in realistic environments and situations concluding that the solution should be better ordnance shielding and avoidance of radio frequency coupling. Then in 1967, an incident aboard the USS Forrestal became a catalyst for major upgrades to HERO over the coming years. An electrical surge triggered the misfire of an F-4 Phantom Zuni rocket striking a fuel tank below Lieutenant Commander John McCain's A-4 Skylark. Fragments of rocket and burning propellant set off a chain reaction of explosions and fire, accidentally killing and injuring nearly 300 sailors and disabling the entire ship. But from the ashes of this tragedy, the HERO program finally rose to prominence, and under Dahlgren's leadership, it became a steadfast initiative that still protects the warfighter to this day. Rapid continuous fire, commence fire! 
When a catastrophic explosion ripped through turret two of the battleship Iowa in 1989, near the end of the Cold War, Dahlgren responded and its investigators took action once again. During the inquiry, they demonstrated that over-ramming propellants into a gun breach could create the necessary pressure to cause premature detonations. Dramatic full-scale drop tests resulted in violent explosions of 16-inch powder bags, further validating their hypothesis. Data yielded from Dahlgren's meticulous investigations like these helps the Navy mitigate the chances of similar events through constant improvements of its technology, systems, and procedures. These effective response efforts echo a long history of accomplishments clearly resounding from Dahlgren's establishment as a proving ground at the pinnacle of Navy modernization in the early 20th century. As the range and sophistication of weapons technology expanded and improved in the late 1800s, America's Navy sought unrestricted space to test their big guns safely. The Navy moved its proving grounds several times before landing at Indian Head, Maryland in 1890. However, it too had its shortcomings. In less than 30 years, a multitude of small incidents added up to a whole lot of trouble for Indian Head. Exploding ordnance shells endangered river traffic and the homes of nearby neighbors and disturbed their livestock. Then, in 1913, a near miss on the Potomac rocked the presidential yacht, the Mayflower, with President Woodrow Wilson aboard, causing quite a stir. By 1918, the naval proving ground at Indian Head simply did not have enough room to accommodate the increasing demand for newer and larger guns at the peak of the First World War. And so the Bureau of Ordnance asked Congress for a new, separate proving ground. The legislature readily agreed, and the Machotic Creek on the Virginia side of the Potomac was quickly identified, offering ideal conditions for testing naval ordnance on the longest river range in the world. On October 16, 1918, colors were hoisted and a seven-inch tractor gun fired a 153-pound projectile some 24,000 yards down the Potomac, a spectacle that signaled the beginning of an era of responsive innovation on these hallowed lower station proving grounds, a place soon to be known far and wide simply as Dahlgren. As the Navy's needs continued to grow, so grew the number of revolutionary solutions coming out of their new ordnance proving grounds. Lower Station was renamed in honor of the father of American naval ordnance, John Adolphus Dahlgren. Those towering ideals of systematic research and development in the production of safe, powerful weapons inspired an era of bold experimentation and groundbreaking efforts. In August 1919, following months of experimental ranging work, the Mark II railway gun fired a 1,400-pound projectile 18 miles down the Potomac, proving superior to the design used in France during the Great War. The 1920s and 30s saw radical trajectory advancements with the Norden bombsite, allowing bombardiers traveling at high speeds and great altitudes to achieve a better probability of successful hits on moving targets, an improvement in accuracy that proved most useful in the war to come. In the decades that followed, Dahlgren's performance remained true to form, responding above and beyond. Whenever the Navy called, they answered. By the 1970s, Dahlgren's work was helping to forge intrepid new systems such as the Tomahawk Sea Launch Missile or the Phalanx Ship Defense System and the Navy's powerful new combat system called Aegis. In only a few short years, Dahlgren made a significant impact on Aegis development by continuing to advance technical solutions and by solving the system's technical problems head on. So it's no surprise that Dahlgren became stewards of the Navy's new Aegis Computer Center in 1982. Here, researchers designed and improved software and simulations, ensuring that Aegis would continue to be the premier computerized naval weapon system 
into the next century. As the Navy shifted its energies to support operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm in the 1990s, Dahlgren continued its legacy of innovation. Extensive research and testing were dedicated to countering potential threats to Navy forces from chemical or biological weapons, or from weapons of mass destruction. At that time, Dahlgren's experts worked to evolve an advanced guidance system for the Navy's next generation of cruise missile, the Tactical Tomahawk. Over the years, Dahlgren has maintained dominance as the leader in warfare systems design and integration. Its cadre of scientists, technicians, engineers, and warriors exude an innate ability to respond successfully to the Navy's ever-evolving needs time and time again reflecting a keen aptitude for innovation and perpetual reinvention. From modest beginnings as a Navy proving ground to today's leading edge design and integration of warfare systems, Dahlgren's ideals have persevered and stood the test of time. Its core values and proficiencies form the foundations of Dahlgren's legendary agility and adaptability. From its unshakable commitment to scientific research, development, testing, and evaluation, Dahlgren has pivoted and reinvented itself whenever needed. This perpetual cycle of reinvention enables Dahlgren's unrelenting pursuit of cutting-edge innovation, ensuring the Navy's lasting supremacy in any domain. 1945 and the end of World War II. The urgent weaponry needs of wartime were in decline, as mounting public pressure led to the demobilization of U.S. armed forces stationed around the world. Dahlgren was not immune to the effects of peacetime restructuring, and within a year had nearly reverted to its pre-war size. However, despite scaling back its civilian workforce, enlisted personnel and reservists, a small, dedicated scientific cadre remained, becoming the backbone of Dahlgren's continuing evolution. America's civilian and military leadership agreed that Allied science had won the war, and that continuing to apply a scientific approach to weapons development would be the only way to overcome the adversaries of the future. The Navy's Bureau of Ordnance followed suit, shifting its major emphasis from production and maintenance to research and development, which aligned with Dahlgren's strengths perfectly. With its mission decisively refocused, Dahlgren's renewed vigor facilitated forays into bold new technological developments over the coming decades, ultimately leading to its ascension from proving ground to weapons laboratory, becoming one of the crown jewels of American defense. One of Dahlgren's core competencies is its strength in ballistics and range calculations. As the sophistication of the Navy's weapon requirements continued to grow, faster and more complex calculations became a necessity. Dahlgren saw a need to strengthen its workforce to attack problems like these with even more brain power than ever before. In an era still tarnished by oppressive social currents, Dahlgren broke brave new ground by expanding its staff with heretofore untapped talent, some so brilliant they worked around the clock as human calculators. Dahlgren's early dedication to racial and gender diversity has only strengthened its resolve over the decades. And yet, complex computational demands continued growing. Enter the ARC, the Aiken Relay Calculator. By the late 1940s, this machine was solving problems in one second that would have taken a team of 10 skilled mathematicians an hour or more to calculate. Dahlgren prudently surrounded this asset with science and engineering talent, and with procedures that fostered an in-house technical expertise few other Navy labs enjoyed. These measures gained Dahlgren's team a reputation in the fleet as innovators and crack troubleshooters. By the time the Korean War was over in 1953, the proofing and testing bubble burst just as it had after World War II. But Dahlgren was already on a trajectory to becoming the Navy's preeminent computer authority. 
The arrival of the world's fastest supercomputer, the NORC, in 1955, confirmed the proving ground's course into the future. Dahlgren's groundbreaking mathematics and computational power earned immediate respect from the Navy leadership, netting the station exciting state-of-the-art assignments. 1959. Dahlgren's dramatic transformation is now complete. On August 15th, the Proving Ground was officially renamed Dahlgren Naval Weapons Laboratory, preserving the station's historic significance while conveying the full breadth of its new mission. Dahlgren had overcome potential obsolescence and earned its place in the world of modern weapons research and development. Upgrades and modernizations to Dahlgren's older infrastructure followed, ensuring that its facilities complemented the excellent reputation it had achieved as a laboratory and computational center. Cold War demands and escalating conflict in Vietnam continued to drive the laboratory's output in new directions throughout the 1960s, greatly expanding Dahlgren's areas of expertise and its product lines. Dahlgren's next cycle of reinvention became crystallized in 1975 when Navy leadership consolidated White Oak Lab with Dahlgren as they restructured the fleet after Vietnam. Until then, White Oak had been involved in wind tunnel work, shock testing and explosives development, mine testing and anti-submarine warfare, a range of experience and projects that greatly expanded Dahlgren's already impressive R&D capabilities. The full scope of Dahlgren's work had once again outgrown its name, and the Naval Surface Weapons Center at Dahlgren was born. From Aegis to Ballistic Missiles, Hero, Phalanx, and so many other innovative programs, Dahlgren flourished as a weapons center, continuing to keep the Navy's latest developments on the cutting edge. In 1987, when Dahlgren became designated as the principal R&D center for platform-level combat systems, focus shifted once again to best serve the Navy's dynamic needs prioritizing Dahlgren's work towards the fleet's surface warfare requirements. Since the mid-70s, the Naval Surface Weapons Center at Dahlgren and the Navy itself had undergone a revolution in their approach to surface warfare. With the advent of systems like Aegis, Dahlgren had moved beyond individual weapons to the full integration of weapon systems together with their platforms. Thus matching its title with its renewed mission Dahlgren became the Naval Surface Warfare Center. Dahlgren's significant contributions to Navy surface warfare continued to progress, even as the Navy realigned its RDT and E community into four full spectrum mega centers in the 1990s after the Cold War had ended. When the Navy reallocated the titled Naval Surface Warfare Center for one of these mega centers, Dahlgren fell in line as one of its principal divisions. In the year 2000, Dahlgren Division absorbed Damneck, a vital technical support hub for the Navy since the 1960s. Damneck's unique expertise blended with Dahlgren's own robust capabilities and provided a window to the fleet from the historic Atlantic shore of Virginia Beach. Ever vigilant, Dahlgren remains poised to reinvent itself whenever needed, always ready to lead the Navy's innovation for the next generation. A century of innovation, an array of capabilities like no other, and a core focus on warfare systems development and integration. Today, Dahlgren Division continues to evolve with the ever-changing mission of the warfighter and new advances in technology. The division's fundamental proficiencies are grounded in electromagnetics and engineering, mechanics and physics, computation and analysis, and masterfully directed by a tried and true plan, detect, control, engage, assess methodology. Electric weapons development and integration. Mission engineering and analysis. Cyber warfare engineering. From the strengths of these firm foundations, Dahlgren continues to drive new, forward-thinking, strategic thrusts. Dahlgren is home to innovative thought 
research and development, testing and re-evaluation, all fueled by cycles of reinvention and helmed by some of the brightest thought leaders of their respective generations. We had a very large variety of people working on all types of weapons from 20, 20 millimeter to 40 millimeter to five inch, six inch, eight inch, and, uh, and 16 inch at this range. You felt like, I have really done something. I am part of this success and I have helped. I have had a privilege of working at the Naval Surface Weapon Center. I have grown as a result of being here. It's a wonderful place to work and it's a wonderful place to be and it's, it's my home and always will be. We work for the Navy and the Navy is the end product and knowing what the Navy is and how the Navy operates is really, really critical. So part of the educational experience is to get out into the, uh, get out into the fleet and understand how the fleet operates, how they're organized, how they do things, and what, what the problems are, and therefore what the opportunities are for, uh, for advancement. We believe in collaboration, and we believe in imagination. When the Navy struggles with challenges, it is often that they come to Dahlgren to ask what they should be doing, what they should be thinking about, what we should be working on. It is through a lot of our innovations that have become programs of record that is changing the face of warfare systems today. Dahlgren's constant pursuit of improvement and excellence opens up opportunity at every turn for cutting edge innovation, keeping the next generation's Navy poised to meet the greatest challenges while developing a whole new horizon of defense systems, continuing to protect America's long fought for freedoms and liberty into the future.